Hi, this is Pat Kaplow. I'm solving problem number 16 on page 131 in the Gene Coley textbook. The problem reads that a bucket of mass 2.00 kilograms is whirled in a vertical circle of radius 1.10 meters. At the lowest point of motion, the tension in the rope supporting the bucket is 25 newtons. Part A says, find the speed of the bucket. So let's start with a quick sketch, which I've already done. You can see the bucket is moving in a vertical circle. We have some initial conditions. We know that our mass is initially 2.00 kilograms. Of course, that doesn't change throughout the problem. We know that the tension at the bottom of its path is 25.0 newtons. That's given to us in the problem. And we also know that the radius of the circle, R, is equal to 1.10 meters. We have three sig figs in all of our initial data and as with all problems we'll start by sketching a free body diagram of the bucket at the bottom of its path. So in our free body diagram we need to draw all the forces on there. Of course we have weight. The weight vector is directed downward and we should recognize that there is a tension in the string on the bucket and notice that the magnitude or the length of that tension vector is going to be larger than the weight vector. It needs to overcome the weight vector and have a small residual or net force or as we've learned to describe in circular motion we call that a centripetal force. Ultimately it really means the same thing net and centripetal but when we're applying circular motion problems we call that leftover force as centripetal force. Our equation has already been written, so, uh, uh, I'm sorry, our free body diagram has been drawn, so now we just need to write our equation, which is simply going to be tension minus the weight is equal to our centripetal force. Our tension vector is up, our weight vector is down, at the bottom of the circle is equal to F sub C. I can go ahead and start doing some substitutions. I can say that T minus MG is equal to MV squared over R, of course, mv squared over r is Newton's second law applied to circular motion. I'll write this off to the side, f equals ma. But when we're talking about circular motion, we're talking about uh, centripetal accelerations and centripetal forces. We also know that centripetal acceleration is equal to v squared over r. So once that gets placed into f equals ma, we have a new second law, f equals mv squared over r, which we've described here. At this point, we're solving for the variable v, so we need to isolate that variable. Here's v contained in that term. We need to isolate that. So the first thing that we'll do is multiply both sides by the radius r. We get r times this quantity t minus mg is equal to mv squared. Again, attempting to isolate the variable v, we'll divide both sides by mass, and we get r times t minus mg divided by mass is equal to v squared. Now we can isolate the variable v by eliminating the v squared and taking the root of both sides and ultimately we get an expression that looks like that. Speed v is equal to the root of r times the quantity t minus mg all over m. At this point, we're ready to substitute, which I'll do over here. I'll plug our numbers in. Our radius is 1.10 meters. I'm going to multiply that by our tension, 25.0 newtons, minus the product of our mass, which is 2. I'm going to truncate some sig figs here just to squeeze this all in. 2 times 9.8. All of that divided by our mass, 2 kilograms. Once I put all that into my calculator, turn the crank, and I'm going to get 1.72 meters per second is equal to V, our speed. So we can say that at the bottom of the path of the vertical circle that the bucket is making, the speed of the bucket is 1.72 meters per second. Part B of the problem asks us uh, to solve a slightly different portion of the same problem. I'll eliminate that stuff. Part B says, how fast must the bucket move at the top of the circle so the rope does not go slack? So again, we'll draw a free body diagram. I'm not going to re-sketch 
the bucket moving in a circle. I'm just going to draw that box and say that at the top of the circle, the minimum speed is uh, the centripetal force required for the minimum speed is going to be supplied in this case by just the weight vector itself. So off to the side here, although this is not requisite for a free body diagram, I'm going to draw F sub C. So that centripetal force is supplied by the weight alone. I could go faster. But if I wanted to go faster, I'd need a larger centripetal force. Where am I going to get a larger centripetal force? Well, if I add some tension into the system here. But the minimum speed is where there is no tension, where the rope is just about to go slack, and the weight vector is equal in magnitude and direction to the centripetal force. So my equation actually is quite simple. It's just weight is equal to F sub C. I'll substitute mg in for w and mv squared over r in for centripetal force. Masses cancel out. Even though I have it, I don't need it. I can multiply both sides by r and take the root, and I get root gr is equal to v. Of course, making some simple substitutions, 9.8 meters per second squared times my radius of 1.10 meters is equal to my speed and I throw that into my calculator and get 3.28 meters per second is equal to V. This is part B of problem number 16.